Are you flying with steam gauges and feel like you're the last one left? We're going to talk about how to start building a glass cockpit for your plane in this episode of In the Hangar. So I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Hello, I'm Dan Milliken. Welcome to In The Hangar. My Instagram hang handle is uh, off.taking. And I've got Bill Goble with me today. Again, Bill, welcome back to the show. Glad to, glad to be here again. And you're with Hangar Rats on Hangar YouTube. Rats. And um, uh, we're going to be talking about glass panels. Uh, there's still, you know, uh, some people have already told me even just in the few seconds that uh, we've had since the tease that they still have round dials and steam gauges in there. Uh, panels, but uh, we're going to talk about how to start putting some glass in your airplane, cool. and I appreciate you uh, coming on for that. Cool. First of all, let's talk about the difference between the you know analog instruments versus our digital glass panels. Okay, the, the big the big instruments we're pro we're going to talk about, and when I say s we were talking starter glass, is right. we're not talking G five hundred, G one thousand, one thousand. We're okay. not talking about that. We're talking about somebody's got uh, you know a single engine piston small plane, yeah. and they've got round dials. What can they do to start? So yeah, we're not talking about G empty out my bank account. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, so, and anything <laughs> is going to empty out yeah. my bank account. So uh, so yeah, so we're going to talk about is kind of. Um, simplifying your cockpit, getting rid of uh, essentially your gyro, mechanical gyro instruments. Okay. Okay, so you have artificial horizon, your directional gyro, and... Okay. Oh, you're asking me. Yeah. Well, you've got <laughs> your coordinator, right? You've got your coordinator, so, so also three. vertical so speed. And... What, what, the, um, what the glass does, and any time when we t talk about glass, it's EFIS. So in the eyes of the FAA, it's EFIS, Electronic Flight Instrument System. Okay, EFIS. Anytime you put EFIS, it, this is the, today's FA. Anytime you put EFIS in an aircraft, certified aircraft, it's an STC. You cannot put it on as a, just a mod. Okay, it's, so you can't just go and buy a G5 and put it on your plane. No, you cannot do it as a, as a minor alteration or whatever. It has to be an STC. That's in just, other words, it has to be certified to be able to work in that make and model. Right, right. Okay. <clears throat> so a lot, of the, a lot of the instruments out there, they are approved to replace a Horizon or replace a DG or replace a VSI or replace, but in order to get credit for all of those, you're going to have to have multiple units. Again, multiple failure paths so that oh, you don't right. lose everything. You, they don't put everything in one gauge, so to speak. So if, I, if I'm gonna go with a Garmin, say Garmin G5 or Dynon D10, I can put, I can replace a one item and that's great, but I don't get to get, I don't really have any other mechanical benefit. I don't get to get rid of the mechanical things. Okay, well, let me ask you this. So when you replace a mechanical gauge, um, you know, let's say, I, let's say uh, you, I'm just a pilot, I'm not a mechanic. Do I now, uh, if I've got, if I replace my airspeed indicator, for instance, um, does the pitot tube now become obsolete? How would, what, are the analog, <laughs> readings driving my digital yeah. things. The, the pitot system, everything hanging on the wing and in, that all comes into your cockpit and that will come, feed into the back of it, your now new electronic gauge. So if I, if I go and put that instrument, instrument system, right. the system in there, you'll see on the back of it, there'll be pitot static connections on the back. Uh, there'll be a bunch of wiring connections for different things of that nature. Some of them, um, some of them on say your HSI, your existing right. legacy HSI, or your, um, your uh, nav heads. Uh, some of these will give you left and right steer f that you're going to be actually have input from your radios and or output to your autopilots. So again, it, it can be very, very eloquent, very, uh, very integrated in a very compact package without having to rip the whole aircraft apart. A lot of these, uh, these, these small units, the cool thing is they design them to replace a round gauge. So many of them, you can unscrew your old gauge and slide it in from the front. Like the G5. Like the G5, the D10, uh, I think the Aerosonic, some of those others. So those are actually kind of cool. Uh, then if you're gonna redo a panel, I'm, I'm in the process of finishing off a panel for a customer. They went to Oshkosh and went shopping two okay. weeks ago, right? And they came back and said, look what I bought. Is there any problem putting G5s in? I said, no, easy peasy, just bolt them right in the front. He said, well, I want them bolted in from the back so they look pretty. 
Oh, okay. Which means that's a lot of cutting and chopping and machining and all that. It, it's just a thing, but what it takes is more planning. So yeah. if you want to put one into your aircraft, you kind of think about what you want to do. Sometimes what you may end up doing is saying, well, while I'm in there, the might as well. While I'm in there, I might do some of this, some of that. And so a, a medium-sized budget quickly grows into... It can grow. So like I said, that's where you really have to lay, lay down your wants and needs and try to stick to it. If you have just an aircraft you're doing pry fly on and you've got a uh, pro, you know, problematic uh, artificial horizon, you just don't like it, you want something a little bit better, then yeah, that might be just a, a point. One point, you just change out that and you go. Um, another aircraft you want to have is an IFR platform, good solid IFR platform. Then you put two electronic G5s, D10s, or whatever. And the neat thing is when you do that, now you have the ability to get rid of your vacuum system. That's what I was wondering. So it, it doesn't replace pitot-static, but it does replace vacuum. It, it, can. When, it can when you have multiple systems because right. they're looking for redundant uh, paths. Okay, so what is driving, if the vacuum pump isn't driving, what's, well, I guess it's electrical then at that point. Is you're going to have an AHARS, a digital AHARS. And let's talk about what is an AHARS? Attitude heading reference system. It's basically an electronic, we'll call it a gyro, but it senses right. pitch, roll yaw. Uh, then we have, there's other things that go in. You'll have a magnetometer that's put in a remote part of the aircraft. Right. Uh, you'll also have some interface modules that if you have an autopilot, you have to get from that digital signals to an autopilot, uh, uh, possibly an analog signal that an autopilot can handle. So that's all if, you know, we start spidering out yeah. and, uh, you know, just from, you go from a simple uh, one instrument replacement, now you're, you know, now I want so, it to work with the yeah. autopilot and I want it to do this or that, now you're having to... And and talking just the G5, because, I mean, it's right. kind of, the, everybody's... Every, everybody's talking about the G5. Everybody's talking about G5, or everyone has some Garmin, probably. Uh, they're, the, they're the big dog right now. But it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, it, there's a lot of little units. It's uh, very easy to wire, actually, uh, for an avionics shop. It's very simple wiring. Um, a lot of the units are remote. They don't end up on your instrument panel, so you don't have a lot of trauma to your instrument panel. So you can actually integrate it pretty well. Again, the nice thing is you get rid of the vacuum pump. A dry vacuum pump, how long, do, how long is your vacuum pump supposed to last? What do you figure? Eh, five years, eight years? 750 hours. Okay. Okay, yeah, so right. yeah, so if you're three, flying three years, yeah, yeah, if you're flying in the CLAG, and you've got 600 hours on your vacuum pump, you need to think about that. Okay, so it's a mechanical device, especially a dry vacuum pump. They don't last through the TBO of the engine. They'll typically. No, I just replaced one recently, and but, n it, yeah, but I've got a <laughs> I've got an AHAR system on my plane, and right. so nowadays my vacuum pump is only driving my Fiki system. So yeah. Yeah. So, so again, if you if that's what you're really dependent on, it's something to think about. The cool thing about the G5s, D10, or wherever, they have backup batteries. They last hours, hours, right. and hours. So, so again, you've got that. Everything's packaged. It's, it's backed up. The only thing is, you lose about oh, I don't know, 20 pounds of weight. I mean, just think so of the, the weight. Glass is a lot lighter than the seam gauge. A lot lighter. A lot lighter, and the reliability. There's no mechanical gears. Just think of the gyro, just your Horizon gyro or your DG. You've got a brass wheel spinning on, you know, in there. There's an electric motor, or it's a pneumatic, you know, like a water wheel. It's spinning. It's got bearings. It's got gimbals. There's just all sorts of stuff. Whereas on an electronic device, no moving parts. Okay, so for the person on a budget, they have nothing but round dials. Um, what's a good first step if if they don't want to break the break the bank? Yeah, if I was, if I was, uh, yeah, in fact, I'm in the position right now. Okay. Uh, where I'm doing an upgrade for my own 182. Um, I'm putting in, I'm replacing the DG. Well, why not the Horizon? Well, the, the DG, if you plumb everything to the DG, that's where all the hard work is. Okay. You get your pedostatic, your AHARs, blah, 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 all the stuff. When I add the Horizon, it's just a couple of wires that go up because it's a canvas, what they call it, canvas architecture. It's simple. So it's, it's kind of like the DG is kind of the heart. It's the heart, yeah. So okay. it's kind of the intersection where everything happens. I'm doing that. Now there's other things too, is if I have, say I'm doing spin training. Okay. okay, I have a Cessna, I don't know, 170. I do tailwheel training and then I also want to do spin training. And what I used to do, I remember a lot of flight schools, you want to do spin training. Well, we'll get the mechanic to disconnect the gyros so we don't tumble all the gyros. Okay, well here you go. You, you have an aircraft that you're gonna do dedicated spin training at the school, put a G5 in it. No horizon, you don't nothing to tumble. Done. Okay. Okay, so now you have, you're using kind of a real high-tech IFR piece of equipment for a very, to, to replace something like that. And you have a very good utilitarian profit maker. You don't have to worry about hooking things up and, and undoing mechanical links. So again, it's got a lot of opportunities that way. 
So. You mentioned uh, Garmin's the big dog. Uh, who are the big players in this? The big players, I think, right now are Dynon and Garmin. Uh, Dynon's work with EAA for their SDCs. Um, Garmin has their own stuff. Um, Aspen? Aspen's in there, I believe. Um, Midcontinent's in there with MD302. Uh, there's the ESI 500, which replaced the old ESI 2000. Aerosonic, ESIS. So, Everyone understands that. The other thing that's kind of neat here in the last uh, couple of years is they realize the market is replacing a three and an eighth inch gauge. So most of these equipment, most of this equipment, you unscrew your old gyro and it slides, it slides right in. You can front mount it. It may not be the most prettiest, but instant glass. All right, so I see as a plane owner, um, you know, Garmin, they're good. No doubt, and I have I have a lot of Garmin products. They're expensive. Yeah. Uh, talking to people that fly with the Dynon, um, they're preaching it pretty heavily, um, it's a, and it's a, a much lower yeah yeah uh, entry point. Yeah, I would money. I would I would seriously look at um, I would seriously look at a Dynon. If I had a stack that wasn't of any uh, you know let's say mixed or, or older stuff, I would definitely look at a Dynon first. If I had a complete Garmin stack, I'd probably want to stay right back. yeah you want yeah, to but, keep talking but if I've got if I've got different different stuff I think Dynon is definitely a, a player okay so we talked about dropping in the one gauge what about if we want to go ahead and, and head towards that glass panel we've got maybe a little bit more money in the avionics budget um, and I want to replace two or three at a time is it a thing where I get my two G5s or can I go with an Aspen 1000 you know or Dynon has a product that's like what do you recommend if, if I want to go ahead and and you know replace say three yeah and that's where now it's it's kind of getting into the mind as well now that we've changed say we're going to change some of the gauges we've got six holes in the panel right okay and you only get so much credit again you've got to figure out what that stc is going to let you do whether it's going to let you take the whole six pack out okay. or if it's only going to give you credit for a couple items say the gyro instruments versus the pedostatic and the gyro instruments so again Every STC is a little bit different. And then the other thing is once you change, you start changing, I, I call it punching holes in the panel, now you're talking about machining a new panel. Price goes up, okay? Right. And, and you're gonna have to, now you, and you really need to be, you really need to be uh, in lockstep with your avionic shop or your installer to make sure that all that's gonna play. Um, I've, got a, I've got an aircraft right now, customer has a 650 Garmin, mm -hmm. awesome navigator, uh, GNC 255, another great Navcom. They have an STEC 30. The avionic shop never hooked the two together. Oh, wow. That's insane. That's insane. So you need to work with a good avionic shop to make sure all the stuff is integrated. Okay, so to be able to uh, f work on my avionics, uh, can any AMP do that or do you have to, because that's air, um, air plant, uh, airplane and power plant. No. Airframe and power plant. Air, airframe <laughs> and power plant. Um, can, can an AMP work on avionics? Or do you need somebody with a different certification? No, an, uh, an AMP can put avionics in, no problem. What you find is on the new equipment, the dealers have, um, whether it's a Perio or a Garmin or Aspen, the dealers have, as part of being a dealer, they have their mandates from the manufacturer says these will be put in by a the shop itself. Um, you look at, say, a G500, G1000, that can only be put in by the uh, avionics, the Garmin dealer. However, a GDL82, just a little ads out transmitter, they can sell those over the counter as for an AMP install. It's SDC and all the paperwork comes with it. But again, it has to do with the dealer. Now, a lot of your dealers, it, it depends on what they're selling as to what they would recommend. You know, I think, I think you need one of these because that's what I'm selling. <laughs> but it may not be what you really want. And so, or need. So, so that's where you kind of need to do some, some uh, crosstalk with some of the folks you're flying with, how they like it. And if you have the opportunity, try to find somebody that has one to fly it. Especially, oh, absolutely. You know, like a D10, great piece of gear. Great piece of gear. Go fly one. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what, what the Dynon stuff is because I, 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 I'm starting to hear more and more people talk about that, especially as, a, as a, an alternative to the more expensive uh, Garmin and Aspens. Yeah, and then when you get into certain things, Touchscreen. I know touchscreen is the new buzz. Yeah. Touchscreen is great. I'm transitioning to touchscreen, and I have a real problem with bumpy air. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, just because you can, maybe you shouldn't. 
So uh, make those buttons a little bigger. Yeah. So it, it's kind of neat. But again, if you have the opportunity to try and fly it, that was probably it's a great the idea. Thing. Yeah. And then get a big piece of cardboard and start putting your panel together and put your wish list together. And then go check your bank and see what you got. <laughs> well, that'll be a short trip. Um, last question. Yes, sir. If I upgrade my avionics, um, you know, it's a loaded question. Um, how well will that hold if I want to go sell my plane? Will I get that money back in that G5 I threw in there if I uh, now go put it on controller? Uh, I will answer that with a with a. I'll answer that question with a question: Is if you put a pool in your backyard, are you going to get your money back when you sell a house? I don't know how to pool. Exactly, and the deal is, build the plane. <laughs> you're not going to. I'll tell you right now, you probably won't get it back. If you're buying a plane, buy the plane with the engine and avionics you that want. That you want, yeah. That you want. If you want, if you're thinking about selling the plane, don't put a dime into it. So, like, if somebody had, say, like a, a Piper Cherokee Warrior II, mm -hmm. and they only had steam gauges. Um, and they put uh, G5 in there, the money that they spent in that G5, and then they went and sold that plane, which they would never do. But let's say they sold that plane, would, it, uh, would they get that money back from the G5? Probably not. Probably not. And the deal is, and, and again, I, I tell folks, I've, I've got, I know folks that have twice what the plane's worth in avionics because yeah. they like it, and it does what they need it to do. You, and, yeah, so that's and what so it's about. You, you've got to do that. Figure that out because yeah. sometimes you may not get yeah, it. So the argument that uh, I'll get this money back when I sell it, no, no, that's not no, I had an interesting thing yesterday, just yesterday, I was talking to a young gentleman, CFI, 250 hours, and we were talking about a couple different aircraft we have, and uh, flying them, he said, well, you know, I've never really flown anything with steam gauges. Oh, we never have. <laughs> Holy said, cow. I'm not real familiar with them. I'm, you know, G500, G1000. So oh, wow. it's funny that, you know, I just think it's hilarious. He doesn't know what a six-pack is. Oh, he thinks he's going to go drink that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's funny. So, so, so having, maybe having the G5 or Dynon in there, isn't a bad thing because yeah. it, it helps it helps everybody out. So well, it's a wave of the future. We're gonna if you think of of conventional gauges today like pocket watches. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're going that way. We're going towards glass. Yeah. So All it's right. a, it's well, it's a good thing. Thanks, Bill. Yes, sir. Appreciate you coming on again and uh <laughs> we'll probably have you back. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. And if you're looking to upgrade that panel, leave us some comments. Let us know what you like. Are you a Dynon uh, user? I'd like to hear from you, as well as the Garmin and the Aspens and all the others. So like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time in the hangar. <laughs>